So, <coughs> if anyone ready, I'm gonna. Oh, like, is there any? Is everyone ready? You should say like, kind first. Yeah. Uh, I'm ready. So, concept constructed bridge starts now. When you gave the resolution that technology, technology companies use our personal data is more beneficial than harmful, we provide you a framework with accuracy and personal autonomy. Our country team, a professor from Columbia University 2018, a good country and a good economy, will be one that provided to everybody sufficient liberties and aptly support to live a meaningful development lives. For most people, our sense of autonomy is more influenced by private forces and economy structure rather than by government. Our contention one is monopoly or, or oligopoly. According to Kira 2015, data becomes the barrier to entry to the market and thus prevents new com competitors from entering. As a result of established players' access to vast amounts of proprietary data, overall in in industry competitiveness suffers. Even worse, provided that today's search engines cannot reach high-quality results with result this historical user behavior, Th those companies are gaining power not by improving their products and services, but by holding a larger database by entering, uh, by entering pre uh, pre uh, prior to to other competitors, while smaller firms or new startup with better technology without stable existing cons consumer base can never fully reach their maximum quality. quality. Those are very hard to enter the market and break the monopoly. It will inevitably lead to market manipulation as tech giants have to have the absolute power of controlling the market. We give you two sub points to show the consequences. Sub point A, cloud innovation. According to Stafford 2018, five companies control roughly two thirds of worldwide cloud services. The have monopolizes the profit pools, leaving little or no space for long tail new startup companies, and the had depresses the likelihood that innovation from the tails become the mainstream. Sub point B is merchantile abuse. According to Frank 2019, big tech Companies cut off data access to competitors. Without competition, a dominant firm or several dominant firms can more easily reduce quality or adjust the prices according to their own maximized uh, benefit, creating a price discrimination paradigm. They set up, use, set up abusive price and no cost, while cons customers have no choice but and left no way to protect their rights. Condition two is targeted promotion manipulation bad. A major use of personal data by technology company is to recommend contents to its users. This is very simple to understand. Companies like Google get to know what you are searching for so that they can later bring you something similar to the earlier research results. They help you to pick out content that you may like among myriad of information boosted in information error. It seems quite good to reduce the time of information selection that makes our life much easier, while what you ignore is the detrimental effect underlying beneath this daily convenience. Whatever you see may easily be manipulated by the mechanism. The filter mechanism itself automatically creates a comfortable zone for you way earlier than you realize. We give you two sub points to show the consequences. Sub point A, some Consumerism and exploitation. Targeted promotion offers what you whatever you intend to favor constantly, increasing your possibility of purchasing. And the more purchase you do, the more accurate the filtering mechanism is. The terminal results can you would accept this information, see yourself as more interested in the company's products. This change how you see yourself and enhance your perception that products promoted are more favorable than they actually are. For example, Rebecca 2016 narrated that if consumers have at least some interest in outdoors, the, the behaviorally targeted Advertisement makes them feel more outdoorsy and more likely to purchase relevant facilities than they actually are. Eventually, it has led and will further lead to consumerism phenomena. The overconsumption will be more omniscient, while the most economically weak or vulnerable groups in the society will be those who are hurt in particularly. As the more consumer consumption they do, the more loans they are prone to borrow, leading to higher debt burden and greater possibility of personal bankruptcy. Supporting these political manipulation, it should be noted that internal Facebook documents looked in early May show that Facebook itself has been mining users' emotional status and sharing that information with advertisements. Uh, advertisers. The data was purportedly used to deliver hyper-partisan messages to mill of voters prior to the 2016 presidential election in the United States, playing the fears and prejudice of people in order to influence their voting plans and, and behavior. It just directly caused on the very basis of democracy, leading to the collapse of democratic regime, proud to negate. All right, time is up. Okay. Uh, judge ready? Am yes. Ready? Am I ready? My speech will start now. We stand strongly pro on the resolution. Our framework is whichever side is able to help and save most people should win this debate. Condition one, eight, medical management. Sub point eight, healthcare becoming efficient and less costly. The field of personal data is in healthcare is extremely essential. Every single patient is unique. Therefore, healthcare will need to be cooperated in order to promote efficiency. Sheridan's aggression tech company expected 
be able to deeply analyze the data to provide better alerts and tailor recommendation for patients and caregivers. Sheridan has been looking at big data systems such as IBM Watson, Clavara, Horitons. The drug development industry is bogged down by skyrocketing development costs and research that take thousands of human hours. It costs about 2.6 billion US dollars to put each drug through clinical trials, and only 10% of those drugs are successfully brought back to the market. A McKinsey report on big data healthcare states that the integrated system has improved outcome in cardiovascular diseases and achieved an estimated 1 billion US dollars in saving for induced office visits and lab tests. Personal data usage could cover the 80 6% of mistakes made in healthcare industry that are caused by administrative actions. It is a chilling reality one often overlook in annual mortality statistics, preventable medical error persists, and the number three killers in the United States, third only to heart disease and cancer, claiming the lives of some 400,000 people each year. Someone B, AI and big data corroborated. Adam White used AI to tackle some of the today's most serious diseases, including Ebola and multiple viruses. The company's neural network called AtomNet helps predict bioactivity and identify patient characteristics for clinical trials. Adam White's tech AI technology screens between 10 and 20 million genetic compounds each day and can reportedly deliver results 100 times faster than traditional pharmaceutical companies. A 2016 study of 35,000 physician reviews revealed that the usage of personal data could actually resolve 96% of patient complaints about a lack of customer service, confusion over paperwork, and negative front tech, front tech experiences prevention of criminal activities. Estimate put the United States total spending on law enforcement at over 100 billion a year. That's when the world today is fighting crime and terrorism through computer analysis of patterns of personal data. These technologies are processing data within the devices themselves to speed up crime fighting and terrorist prevention capabilities. A McKinsey report published this month showed that the smart deployment of data-driven tools can help you reduce fertility by up to 10%, lower crime incident by as much as 40%, and dramatically reduce emergency response time. According to Shots, about 80% of 911 calls give zero non-detail information, such as the location and current situations. However, the company has already invented text that could instantly send essential info to 911 and other facilities through the use of personal data. Events and security such as encryption techniques, technologies, firewalls, antivirus softwares, etc. are the answer for more security. Real-time data analytic companies make it possible to quickly detect anomalies like errors and fraud. For instance, the Center of Medicare and Medicine Aid service said that it saved over 210 million US dollars in fraud just in one year. And past global transactions suggest that advanced authorization program can help identify US, can help identify 1.5 billion US dollars in fraud around the world. The, automate, the automated and accelerated of the creation of networks mapping people, topic, location, etc., while helping security services identify criminal activities. Condition three, promote efficiency. Real time data analysis also allows business to create effect, effective strategies that weren't possible in the past. Sales data, industry trend, and market indicators can help organizations stand out from their competitors by better understanding customer behavior and the products and services they prefer. Companies that do, not, do use customer data analytics in an accountable manner, however, do show measurable advantages, averaging an 11.2% year-over-year growth in their customer win-back rates and an 8.1% increase in customer satisfaction. It is too expensive and time-consuming to analyze thousand products manually. Automated system can identify narrow segments, determine what drives value for each one, and match that with histor historical transactional data. Condition for SSL and blockchain technology. The use of personal data is not as invasive and dangerous as the posting site mentions. Companies have adopted secure and effective technology to ensure safe personal data usage. SSL is based on the principle of encryption, where public and private cryptographic keys are used to sign documents. SSL takes these cryptographic concepts and the form of sharing data by blockchain technology are more secure. The companies are receiving a minimal amount of data, and even the storage is decentralized. Therefore, we urge a pro ballot. Thank you. Right. We Thank urge you. a pro ballot. Thank you. Uh, we are for a thirty-second prep time. Thank you. Okay. Our time is up. Oh, could we call for? Oh, okay. Like crossbar. So, Judge ready? Yeah. My, uh, my partner ready?
So time started now. I believe that's my turn to have the first question. My first question is, so by mentioning your uh, condition one about medical services, so are you are you mean that the tech companies will interpret and analyze like myriad of, like myriad of um, uh, patient symptoms and their health and, and they are and their health document exactly right? Yeah, like the tech company can be corroborated with the healthcare industry by analyzing their uh, medical histories and all this, uh, and they can use uh, like EHR systems to promote efficiency. And now on to my question, I would like to ask, can you elaborate on how the big, like how tech monopolies is actually killing innovation? Because one recent research survey found that customer would need to pay, yeah. My follow-up is so by analyzing the general the general aggregation of the healthcare data, do you need to know every single case patient's name or their phone number or their IP addresses, or you just need need the information like oh a boy of seven years old like with how how much weight and height and how much and have some cancer or have some diseases and then what whatever whatever happened? Do you need like do you need more about his like the development of his healthcare status, or you need more about their like his privacy, personal information. Okay, so we define personal data as anything that can be traced back to the identity of a person. And now you are mentioning about how uh, we don't need those privacy data. However, like, I mean, I mean, however, 86% per, of uh, healthcare industry mistakes are made by administrative mistakes. However, with uh, tech companies corroborated with their detailed analysis, of like yeah, travel. Yeah, my point is, you can yeah. do analysis, but it's it like, for example, there is gonna be 100 cancer patients. You should, you can just know like on um, some patient A, which is a like anonymous name, A has some cancer and developed in what what stage and developed in what uh, whatever stage. And it is not necessarily for you to know that A, oh, okay, A is Diego or A is Nate, right? You just need to know some patient with some physical status and gain some cancers in some stage, right? Okay, if we do not know her, his or her name, how do we treat them? Uh, you're not listening to uh, your, your okay, can, I, can you answer my question on how uh, big tech companies is actually killing innovations? Because okay. we have research stating that it okay, is actually promoting innovation. It's, gonna, it's like the big, like the five biggest company in the market concent mm -hmm. have concentrated two thirds of the entire databases without, and they form a collusion without, the, without a larger, large enough data basis the new startup even if they have more innovation or more innovative technology they can know they cannot enter can you the name the five because i can name 10 like snapchat facebook these are all competitors in the market there are no there are, there is an a, like a really monopoly existing and these big tech companies are actually helping the innovation by giving them free access and free free search online promoting opportunities for them thank you um, thank you. We call for one minute of prep time. Okay, so. Oh. Um, sorry, we'll call for 20 seconds more. 20 seconds. All right, I'll just let go of the remaining of my prep time. So that was 15 seconds. Okay. Um, Four minutes, rebuttal speech, time will start. Now, so starting off with the framework and definition, there is an important distinction that we have to make today between personal data and metadata. What is personal data? Personal data is something that can be linked back to you as a person, and metadata is not linked back to you as a person. So for example, if you want pharmaceutical companies to develop drugs, and if you want to know all of their names and to treat each patient individually, that uses personal data, all right. However, if you want to make a drug, for heart disease, then you don't need to know the personal information 
of these patients in order to make a drug. You only need to know the, how their disease developed, which is not attributed to any single uh, essential, uh, essentially person. So basically, that, uh, they are confusing metadata and personal data in their first contention, and thus their first contention should be excluded from the range of today's discussion. And second of all, the framework of today's debate should be equity and uh, personal autonomy, because that is the most important thing in today's economy, so that individuals, people, uh, the components of the economy can benefit from the economy. Now moving on to their contentious medical. Uh, number one response already said is that it's not topical, even if it is topical, it's not used by technology company, right? It's used by pharmaceutical com pharmaceutical companies or hospitals. And third of all, we do, um, third of all, AI technology that they have talked about is also um, is also a, uh, another component of the analyzation of the data instead of the uh, using the data itself. So basically, AI is a method to use the data, and using the data, uh, should we use the data? Uh, this top is today's topic, and so. Their entire contention one is not topical, and you should not note this for summary and final focus. Now moving on, they talked about solving crimes in their second contention. How about, however, by solving crime, they're essentially doing racial profiling in such solving crime methods because they use past police data. What does that mean? Past police data is data like 2019 report found that LAPD pulled over black drivers four times as much as white drivers, despite white drivers being more likely to have weapons, drugs, or other contraband. This is called a predictive policing program, which analyzes crime data to find a pattern aiming to predict wh uh, where crimes will be committed or even by whom. The idea is to uh, stop crime before it even happens. However, it follows the data that is biased. It follows status quo policing data that is very racist. So the results of this um, predictive policing is, as a mother wrote on New York Times 2017, low-income and minority neighborhoods contain the barbershop where she t took her son for uh, in his uh, monthly haircut, but then she, her son was stopped for four times in this neighborhood just because he was a black person. He did nothing wrong, just the fact that AI thinks that he may be up to no good, right? So as for 911, as for terrorist activities, there have been wide, um, bias toward the Muslim community in the West that uh, they may be tend uh, toward doing terrorist activities. However, that is not essentially true for all Muslims, right? And by using this predictive policing program, you are dragging us under a racist society, which is justified by your so-called predictive policing program and technology. This brings the status quo racism even worse and is more than the impact that you bring around by solving crime. And third of all, we tell you that the efficiency contention only you, uh, only requires metadata again because you only need to know uh, what it what are the patterns of people coming to the shops. So, for example. I want to know if people buy milk tea more or coffee more, right? We don't need to know who bought these milk tea, who bought these coffee. We just need to know the aggregate numbers of milk tea sold or coffee sold. That's metadata, not personal data, so not in the range of today's discussion. The fourth contention, blockchain, it's even more out of the topic, right? They talk about encryption technology to prevent privacy leaks. However, that is inherently incompatible with their contention too, in which they have the police use, what, uh, use the personal data. If you're going to store it on a blockchain, how are other people going to access it? How are other people going to get the authorization? So the case has a fundamental flaw and should be denied. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sorry, I'm muting myself. Um... Okay. Jared, ready? Poems ready? My time was star. Now, first on to their contention one, talking about monopoly and oligopoly. Basically, two things. The first thing is that data uses kills innovation, and the second thing is that tech giants drive our competition. We're answering uh, both and both, right? First is that data is ubiquitous, inexpensive, and easy to collect. And, um, and we also have an evidence come from Amazon, which is the largest investor, spending $22.6 billion globally for research and development. We see that tech giants have more capabilities to innovate than these small businesses. The company is looking for innovative ways to attract customers and is putting its money behind these efforts in a big way. PwC also indicated that Alphabet spent $16 billion, Microsoft $12 billion, and Apple $11 billion on R&D. We don't see innovation being cut down. Two, we tell you Facebook. Privacy concerns are also providing opportunities for competitors to provide a different balance of privacy protection and data collection for targeted advertising that customers and advertisers might prefer over Facebook's. The only way for Facebook 
to keep its dominance is to offer a better product that appeals to its customers, which is why the company is continually changing its design features and privacy practices. It also spent 7.8 billion on innovating that. Entering towards how the competition is being dragged out, we say that according to Sabaro Carl 2018, for America's small and mid-sized business, the bigger the platform, the better for small business trying to reach a big audience, which basically means that the tech giants are what the small business need because they can provide those huge platforms for them to access to their customers. We tell you according to Barlow's Jeff 2018, those giants give startups instant access to vast markets, efficient ads, cheap and reliable infrastructure. And three, we tell you that Facebook recently announced its plan to form these uh, to form $1 billion in programs for small business in 2018. Furthermore, we tell you with Amazon example that its lead in retail market has spurred competition in the retail market that greatly improves consumer welfare. We don't see the price being dragged out. We see that when Amazon competed with Quizzy, it actually decreased its price so that the consumers would like them more. Moving on to why small business would not even exist with tech companies, we tell you that only 50% of business with employees survived past the first five years. We see that small business fell on its own. That's why they want to be bought out or being helped by those tech giants. Moving on to your uh, point about contention to targeted in bad. We tell you that more than 85% of mobile marketers report success with personalization, higher engagement, revenue, and conversations, which basically means that personalized experience is actually good for the customers. That's exactly what they wanted. The impact they brought out is seeing that consumer exploitation and more purchasing. We tell you that more purchasing is actually good because according to Inc.com, consumer spending accounts for 70% of Americans' economic growth. If that reverses, we'll be in recession next year. We see that consumer spending is actually good for the economy and that's why it's spurring competition in the market overall. Moving on to their contention to some point B, talking about political manipulation. Basically using example is Facebook. Facebook. We tell you that Facebook must pay a record-breaking $5 billion fine as part of a settlement with the Federal Trade Commission because of its previous violation of privacy. We already see that the CEO Mark Zuckerberg already improving the scenario. First on to hurting democracy. We say that micro targeting promises to increase the diversity of political campaigns and voters' knowledge about certain issues. It can make political political campaigns more diverse. In representative democracies, voters select political parties that they find suitable to form the government. So it's not actually hurting democracy, but also providing them more chances to gain better knowledge of the, what they're trying to vote on or what their major topics concern. Moving on to your rebuttal against ours, they say that first, co our contention why it's not topic. I will tell you why it's not. Because first, they mistaken our argument for making a drug. We tell you that we're by using EHR and AI to cover up each individual patient, we can cover up the mistake of 86%. That's why we are, by using the products of the tech company used by healthcare industry, we combine the both and say that we benefit the patients one by one. It's not producing a drug that we are arguing for. Contention two, we said that the racial programming is one single example of racism that happens. It's not the technology itself is biased, nor the algorithm is biased. It's the people who are biased. We cannot change a social society while looking only at the product, but not the root cause. It's not our burden. That's why we strongly affirm. Thank you. That's fine. How much prior time do we still have? Um, how much prior time do we still have? I uh, very con. Uh, con. Uh, con, you have a total of uh one minute forty five seconds. We'll take thirty five seconds. Thirty five. Okay. Okay, sir. Ready? Okay, yes. Um, three minutes crossfire. I have the first question starting now. Do you admit that the status quo um, predicted policing system is consists of some racism, yes or no? Predicted by police officers, yes, but by the algorithm created by tech companies specifically, no. Um, a quick follow-up, please. So basically, do you know these, uh, what data do these algorithms run on? These algorithms basically collect, for example, your terrorist actions or speeches posted on social media like Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. It doesn't you have really a source for that? Or whether 
you know, the racial uh, discrimination is not accounted for what they should act in terms of whether you have a possibility of becoming terrorist. And also in our case, we never talked about that. All we are talking is the happening crimes, which are the 911 calls, 80 percent of them gets unsolved because the address of the crime is not uh, occurring on the front page that they can't know. So by accessing personal data, we can know and to solve these 80% of ex existing crimes happening right now. So I believe here's my question. Yes. Um, okay. In your contention three, you talked about, uh, for example, consumers exploitation, more purchasing. Tell me if the 70% of Americans GDP are composed of consumer purchasing, why is that even bad? Well, the thing is, you can't have customers overspend, right? If people spend rationally, that's all right. That's good for the economy. The money's flowing. However, when people are spending all of their money, like students are spending all of their money to toward luxuries, towards Air Jordans, it won't be good for the economy because at the end, someone's going to have to pay for their luxuries, right? When someone is yeah, going to have to pay for their luxuries and they can't pay for it, it's Hold an on. economic collapse. Copy right there because you're listing extreme examples of irrational consumers, which are going to exist in society regardless regardless of whether tech company can have any interference among it. Even if today we don't have uh, any tech company, we only have doors, it's still going to happen. Can I respond to that? Okay, so basically in our contention to target promotion, we are saying that uh, people get more irrational when they see all these ads pushing towards them, telling you that you deserve what, what, what you deserve, something, something. And this makes people more irrational, which brings on to consumerism, right? When consumerism right. happens, you see something like Roaring Pointies. Okay, so look you realize great, that but then, broadcasting yeah, or depression. TV also has these advertisements, right? It's not just that when you click on a website. Like, if you go onto TV and watch those commercials, it still exists. Well, TV commercials you is less dense in your life than, than, than trying to reach your okay. target audience. Okay, so That's what all business do. Do you watch TV more or do you use WeChat more? Well, according to 2020, WeChat, but like this consumer yes. doesn't so, verify in developed or very developing countries, right? So if people are using these technology companies' products more, then the frequent push is somewhat like brainwashing. And this is actually having a result that is shown, this being is shown right now. PA regardless of whether you try to push tech companies' products. It's not unique. Sorry, that's time. <laughs> Uh, I will just start. So, judge ready? Yep. Opponent's ready? Time's turn now. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Wait a second. Let me get my timer. So, time's turn now. Firstly, about the framework. We believe that we value the privacy and personal autonomy. We are not only caring about the overall societal, uh, societal boost or prosperity. We also care about the individual level, their, 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 their economic opportunity, and their like political preferences, freedom. And then moving on to our condition. Our condition one is basically telling you monopoly or oligopoly. We give you two consequences. Firstly, color innovation. And secondly, mercantile abuse. Firstly, our opponents only tell you that like the, the data is ubiquitous in the market to collect. Yes, but the fundamental way to collect the data is that there is actu actually people using it. If the people actually like they use WeChat, for example, like very frequently and they find that WeChat is very like uh, convenient to use, there is no incentive for them to just uh, shift to some new open app or no, no new open app start up. And secondly, they tell they tell you about like the research and development. However, this research and development they name some country companies like Facebook and Zuckerberg. Et cetera, et cetera. They, they just only happen in the large in, in the large tech companies. They just want to maintain the monopoly status in order to do the limited extended innovation. But if when you, whenever you make a comparative analysis, you will find that in the free market situation, the innovation will be way more innovative compared to the monopolized paradigm created by the affirmation side. Condition two about targeted promotion back. We, 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 also, they give you a TV example, but we tell you making the comparative analysis. The target promotion is way more effective and way more targeted compared to the TV promotion. So it will just increase the consumerism phenomenon and also increase the political manipulation. So we give you two consequences. Firstly, on consumerism, leading to individual level of bankruptcy, etc., etc. So they just read a card to tell you that, oh, the overall economy is boosted. How do we tell you? Yeah, it, the overall economy is boosted by, ir by rational purchasing behavior, not by purchasing, purchasing ir irrationally. And then uh, sub point B is about political manipulation. Our opponents, our opponents seems to misunderstood the total point. They tell you about how Facebook, how Facebook like previously sold data to personal advertisement uh, advertiser and be fine. How we tell you that we are not saying that tech companies are gonna sell data or violate your privacy. You just 
they, they will just use the pro, use the targeted promotion to give you more to give you more targeted uh, political manipulation and in order to control your behavior without violating any kind of role they also give you a re, give you a reason to be telling you that oh you will create greater political diversity however they give you no evidence on it we also tell you that diversity doesn't change the name doesn't change the nature of like of political manipulation their behavior is still being manipulated onto their own case firstly we tell you that there is a major distinction between personal data and metadata metadata are never related to the person that should be considered as made uh, off topic. On their condition one medical services, we tell you that analyze, analyzing this metadata is okay. And secondly, uh, AI is the method to protect process the data, the, the, the tech companies are using AI, not the personal data. So it's off topic on their provision of crime. We tell you it increased the racism behavior. On the efficiency of business, we tell you metadata is enough. On the condition four, we tell you the blockchain technology is actually contradicting their condition to you about crimination, so prop to negate. All right, can I have one and a half minute, please, prep time? Time is up. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, opponent, sorry, priority, my speech will start now. Okay, in my summary speech, I'd like to first go over our opponent's contentions and their rebuttals and then moving on to our point. Okay, they first talk about the difference of personal data and metadata. Uh, by, they mentioned how firms will only need to know how many customers purchase an item. However, according to GDPR, online purchases that include an online IP or email addresses are also considered as personal data. So personal data actually falls in within the range of metadata, which is totally uh, Relevant and as well as genetic data, which is considered with the healthcare industry, we talk about monopolies and oligopsy next. People, however, uh, we tell you that people do not use Facebook because the company has emptied their uh, lives of alternatives. We can still connect with one another by text, email, telephone calls. Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, writing a blog and creating an online community, Twitch, Fortnite, and other online games and platforms, Snapchat messaging uh, services, and also Facebook's own WhatsApp maximize for privacy and last but not least knocking on your neighbor's door then there's messaging and chat it turns out that small businesses often do it better in fact they produce 16 times more patents per employee than large companies therefore answering to their client innovation they talked about manipulation and irrational customer behaviors which cross applies to our constraint three on efficiency their their entire sub point supports our point on efficiency by because by efficiency we mean that by learning the customer's personal data and their be customers consumer behaviors, and we can have efficient advertisement towards them with appropriate prices so they could afford them without uh, over consuming. And now talk, uh, and then moving on to our contentions, we first tell you that a uh, healthcare industry need to be cooperated with the field of personal data because 29 million of US citizens still lack any coverage because they cannot afford the price of healthcare. However, with a uh, with personal data usage being cooperated, these healthcare are becoming less costly and efficient, which, which can be resolved. By, so these can be all resolved by the use of personal data by making the industry more efficient, less costly. And now looking at uh, our second contention, which is the prevention of criminal activities, our opponents never gave any quantitative, quantitative evidence or any direct 
evidence showing that this uh, does not work because what we have mentioned here is that these technologies are processing data within the device and they speed up crime fighting and terrorist prevention by giving you an example of how 80% of nylon calls give zero or non-detailed information. However, with the usage of personal data by these tech companies, they can actually send essential info to 911 and other facilities through the use of personal data, which is totally unbiased, unlike our opponents have mentioned about uh, racial discrimination. The algorithm and the personal data itself is not discriminatory. It is a social structure uh, right now, which is totally wrong. However, they are trying to put this burden on our contention. And now moving on to our last contention, which is, uh, 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 which is contention for SSL and blockchain technology. We have demonstrated how the use of personal data is not invasive and dangerous as the posting side mentions by providing you with SSL and blockchain technology, which our opponents never really mentioned. Therefore, we urge a pro ballot. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Grand Cross now. Uh, we would like to uh, we would like to take like uh, twenty seconds prep time. Okay, ten seconds. All right. Um, it's Grand Cross. Grand Cross starts now. I believe that's my turn to have a to have the first question. So let's make a comparative analysis um, based on uh, like like um, if the tech companies use personal data to do the predict uh, like predictive policing, do you think that um, the, the, the like the stero social stereotype of racial bias will be put into reality compared to like rather, rather than just an ideological existence. First of all, it's not an ideological existence. It exists in physical world, and that's why it cannot be bought on online. Because in a virtual world that's created by internet, we stop these kinds of things because we create the algorithm that is totally not biased. People see discrimination so because like, they're human based. That's exactly the differentiating part between technology and the people who use it. You cannot blame the technology just because the people who use them are bad. Okay, so here's my question. Oh uh, no. <laughs> okay. So we we believe that this kind of affirmations that use tech use predictive policy, it, yeah, the technology the technology itself is unbiased, but technology itself serves as a magnifying of the racism, putting put it into a like largely ideological existence into the physical reality and giving the police the power to conduct racism behavior. And then you have a question. Sorry, but that's just simply not true because it doesn't magnify the scenario. The scenario exists on itself. It only the maximum possibility is that the social syndrome is existing upon the appearance of technology. It doesn't okay. mean it's so existing. basically. Can so I ask a question just, now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So let, let's talk about um, efficiency and customer service, right? You talked about how customers are like being badly treated. Uh, how is eight percent increase in customer satisfaction and eleven percent of uh, customer win back rates bad for that customers like well, for look, a it's, rate. it's like being a parent because your kid gets more uh, sweeties and they become more happy doesn't mean that getting more sweeties is essentially good for them the same applies for the economy right if you over lend and over buy something if you get push ads that tells you to buy an iphone because an iphone looks classy then you are going to buy that iPhone using loans. And that such loans is exactly what caused a lot of financial disasters in the past. This is amplifying the result. Sorry, sorry, yes. Dave, but you're assuming too many things at the same time. First, you assume oh, that please. they're so poor that they can't afford iPhone. Second, you assume that everyone needs to pay loans. Three, you assume that everyone is a rational consumer just because they're online. Well, they never okay, so to right. answer the three assumptions, one, some people are rich to buy an iPhone, but if they buy an iPhone, they get deducted amounts of money on their account. And number two, just because some people are rich enough to afford an iPhone, because poor people are sometimes more likely to become irrational, then they are more Wait, likely are to borrow assuming, money are people to buy these stuff, right? irrational? Are you assuming that? Do you no. make a comparative analysis? You will find that affirmation means more irrational behavior. And that's time. Right, that's time. Um, how much time do we have left? 41 seconds, running in. Only 41 seconds.
Okay. Um, two minutes final focus. Starting now, so starting off with the framework of today's debate, equity and personal autonomy, let's base that and do a comparative analysis in the world with uh, personal data usage and in the world without personal data usage. Now, we tell you that oligopolies, if not monopolies, kill off uh, progress and they kill off innovations. Our, opponent, uh, our opponents may tell you that uh, do uh, that big, gi uh, big tech giants, they do do innovations and they do spend money on research. However, that is solely for the purpose of keeping their oligopoly status on the market all of the examples that they have raised are in fact um of a uh, of a minority of corporations in fact five companies in the world dominate two-thirds of the world's cloud services that is a very scary amount all of your personal data your address your phone number your qq number your wechat number your email address they are all with these five corporates now five corporates is less than four debaters with three judges right now Moving on, our opponents tell you that consumerism is good in which people spend more money. Usually when people spend money, the economy becomes better. But when people spend too much money, the economy does not become better. When you take a look at the Roaring Twenties, when you take a look at the Great Depression, it's where the people get attracted uh, and tempt uh, tempted into overspending. That caused economic disasters. Crypt, uh, these promotions, these targeted promotions, hits directly into what you desire, and they do ca uh, cause you to spend more money. If they don't call you, uh, cause you to spend more money, it's ineffective for the uh, for the shop itself. So basically, that leads to more bankruptcy. And as for political uh, uh, political um, manipulation, which our opponents dropped, is uh, devastating for a demo uh, for a country's democracy. So overall, personal data damages personal autonomy, which is the most important thing, uh, which is the most important factor in an economy. And our opponent's entire case is based on metadata, which is not personal data, and thus shall be ruled out in today's debate. Our opponent is also pro. Uh, is also saying predictive policing, which makes you, as a black person, more likely to be stopped on the street by the police. Thank you. Ready? Time starts. Now, first into clarification, we namely say why our whole case links back to personal data, not metadata, because our contention one tells you about Medicare. We see every single patient is unique, thus we treat them with uniqueness, for example, EHR and AI targeting them. Our service is that it could cover 86% of mistakes made in healthcare industry that are caused by administrative actions. We also tell you that that can save more than 7,000 deaths and more than 500,000 preventative injuries from medication errors. So point B, we talked about AI and big data, saying that we can result in 100 times faster than traditional pharmaceutical companies. We believe that without personal data, every single patient cannot be treated in the same amount. Contention two, we talked about criminal activities, saying that 80% of 911 costs give zero to none detailized information. With personal information with your name and your address, we can track you down and prevent the crimes from actually happening or reduce the amount of crimes. We say that we can lower the crime incidents by as much as Four percent. If personal data is collected, we can solve these emergencies. Contention three, we talked about efficiency, saying that the product is 11 times, 11% 11 more uh, in their customer win back rates and 8% increase in customer satisfaction. Our contention four talks about how our private information is actually secure. Moving on to their case, their contention one, we give four responses. First, is that data is, uh, data is easy to collect and inexpensive. Two, is that tech companies are innovating and small companies even invent 16 times more patents than tech companies. We don't believe that tech companies tech giants are manipulating. Three, we tell you that privacy concerns, for example, Facebook, is actually being solved. And four, we tell you that small businesses would die, 50% of them, without a tech giant's help. Moving on to your second contention, we give you three responses. First, 85% of market success with personalization. So they're so-called irrational consumers. They cut, off, they cut off most of their impact the second they say irrational consumers. They didn't ever quantify how much influence is put on just because it's posted online. Two, we tell you consumers spending 70% of GDP. And three, we tell you that only once you click into a party of political manipulation, Inflation will not happen because we give you diverse choices. And once you look into a party, what they ever the algorithm recommend to you. That's why we strongly affirm the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, one. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> 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 就打你前一个小时我的PrEP
。哎，我们从开始打到现在掉了两个人，大家听不下去了。咪豆掉了，然后再也进不来了，截了你的咪，没有拍到我。嘿嘿，他不要截我命，我 I I barely put on my 我的头啊。七<笑>打完了。所以 Annie， OK， I can tell you， OK， cool。分分分命。就是这个粘不上来啊。好搞笑！我安静了，不是。Laughing so loud。不是 Nate， 这是你家天花板。是的吧？这警车呀。是我的，不好意思。哦、oh.。那你这次去循环播放的吗？Dennis, I just saw your thing.、Um, do we want to do feedback?、Uh, yeah, Chad, you can just give comments and the result. Okay.、Um, yeah, because I know how I'm voting. I don't know if the other judges are ready yet, though. Yeah, I'm ready. I made、right. the、uh, my decision on the、uh, micro program. Yeah, I have. I think it's left with. Oh yeah, let me do that real quick. Yeah, do it on the micro program, and it will reflect there. Yeah, and then the、okay. judge can announce the. Yeah, let me take care of that real quick. All right, I submitted mine. I don't know if everybody else did. Um, did all the judges submit their ballots already? Because I don't want to start doing feedback until we. Okay.、Um, right. So I guess I'll start.、Um, so I voted pro,、um, and I'm just going to kind of go through the contentions.、Um, the so first of all, I, I do want to just make it a point to say that.、Um, Had anyone done work on frameworks, it would have been a much easier decision. Like I think the pro framework of "Hey, you should vote for the team that saves most lives" or whatever, it would have been a slam dunk、uh, with that plus your healthcare contention. Had you spent any amount of time talking about it after the first constructive,、um, but you just kind of like let it drop, and then、um, the cons could have gotten you had they. Done any explaining as to like what exactly equity autonomy mean and how that relates to any of their arguments.、Um, so the framework debate, I think、uh, either side had either side done any real work on it,、uh, it could have、uh, changed the, the outcome of the whole debate. I think.、Um, so onto the individual sort of contentions.、Um, so I'm going to go through.、Um, A few real quick. So that security, like the SSL and blockchain one, just 
don't read that in the constructive. There's not really an impact to it. It doesn't really make sense and it's kind of a waste of time. Uh, it only makes sense as a response to if the con team is like, you're going to get hacked and all the data is going to leak. Then you can talk about SSL and encryption, but until they do that, don't waste your time on it. Um, the customer satisfaction thing has no impact that I could tell, um, so I ignored it. Um, Crime prevention is definitely non-unique. It wasn't clear to me how a, an algorithm would somehow make police officers more racist. Um, that wasn't really articulated well enough for me to feel like that was worth voting on. Um, so on healthcare, um, I think there is a topicality argument to be made, but it's not the one that the cons are making. Um, I think the, the, the way you win topicality with this is by arguing that uh, it's not topical because hospitals aren't tech companies. Um, because uh, EHR is definitely personal data. Um, and I think there was a good point made in the cross axis, like how would you uh, provide medical care for someone without knowing their name? Um, like that doesn't, like it just doesn't pass the, the, the test, uh, the sort of gut check. Um, so yeah, healthcare are definitely topical, and I definitely think the pros pretty resoundingly won. Um, that uh, like data helps improve healthcare outcomes, and that leads to people not dying, um, which is a pretty good impact. And I would have liked to hear more about why that impact outweighs other impacts. Um, that would have been a, a good. You could have spent the whole two minutes of the final focus talking about just the healthcare. Uh, argument and how it outweighs everything else in the round and probably would have won even more decisively. But um, uh, targeted manipulation is uh, kind of a wash. I, I had a hard time sussing out A, what the impacts are, and B, um, like why I should prefer one set of arguments over the other. Um, I think if someone were just walking up to me on the street and was trying to tell me that targeted promotion was good, I would laugh in their face. Um, but this is a debate round and I can't do that, unfortunately. So um, I did have to take the pro argument seriously, even though they, they are ridiculous. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, like, unfortunately, I just didn't feel like the cons did a really good job of I mean, I think they sowed enough doubt that I'm not that I wouldn't put this solidly in the pro column, but I think, you know, a strategically placed like, like turn or something would have uh, been nice. Um, and then the monopoly stuff, again, I don't feel like there's, like, I think the impact just got totally lost. I don't know what, like, why I'm supposed to care about this. Um, and I mean, again, I think the pro arguments are like, knowing what I know as just a normal person are kind of like don't pass the sort of like common sense smell test but again uh, I, I don't get to insert my own opinions uh, as a judge on this one um, I think the con could have done uh, a lot more work uh, on that as well to really um, just tear apart how kind of ludicrous the idea that like Facebook investing money in small businesses is somehow like saving innovation or something um, or, or the idea that like these huge platforms are somehow beneficial for small businesses is also pretty ludicrous. Um, cause like, if you think about it, like Amazon just replaces hundreds upon hundreds of retail outlets. Um, so it's, it's a pretty silly argument. Uh, and I, you know, I think it kind of falls apart if, uh, the con would have just done a little more work on it. So yeah, uh, I voted yeah, pro primarily on the healthcare, on the healthcare argument. Um, so that's that's it for me. All right. Um, okay. So the reason why, actually, I don't know if he mentioned it, but it was a three-zero decision uh, in favor of pro. And the reason why I voted for pro is because I I feel like the pro team was more uh, consistent. Uh, the put was consistent compared to the the, the con side, and also uh, the pro team introduced uh, lots of examples to support their cases. Actually, both teams did an impressive job, I mean, and but, uh, yeah, both teams did an impressive job. But on average, I think uh, the pro side was more consistent, and then 
they uh, introduce a whole lot of they introduced a whole lot of uh, evidences, especially the lady when it came to crossfire. Her uh, submission on, on answers were accurate, uh, supported by evidences, and that was impressive. So that is why I voted for pro. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, the previous two judges have said most of the things I wanted to say. Um, so I'll just say some brief remarks. Um, I think for the pro, make sure contentions are explicitly and clearly linked to the resolution. Um, and Tyler mentioned this before already as well. Um, make sure that when you're explaining the reason and the link beneath each contention, explicitly say, okay, so this is a benefit that we can only access with tech companies using uh, personal data, which I didn't really see from your first contention, not just the healthcare one, even the crime activity prevention one, it wasn't really that clear. Um, secondly, I think some of your points, there seem to be numerous sub points, but I wasn't really sure about that. Uh, so for example, the crime activities, uh, prevention of crime activities contention, um, I thought that there's something about uh, preventing fraud, like online fraud, and then there was something about policing and how it makes calling 911 quicker. Like that seemed to be two separate uh, sub points, which I thought it might have been better if you had demarcated it um, um, more lucidly. And I think for rebuttal, it might be better to focus on flushing out your rebuttals rather than defending your own points, um, because you sort of did that at the, in the last 30 seconds of the rebuttal. I think that can be saved until summary, um, especially because I think some of your rebuttals were not, could have been more flushed out, especially if, um, for your empirical point claims, I think it's uh, important for those claims to make sure you provide specific evidence. So for example, you had a rebuttal about how data is actually easy to collect. Um, I didn't really hear any specific evidence for that. And I didn't hear any specific evidence for the idea about how it increases diversity. And I think these are empirical claims. Um, and when, when you make an empirical claim, I think it's better to have specific uh, evidence. Also, I think you should uh, take care to extend your contentions through the debate. So for example, your third contention about allow companies to making better strategies to look more targeted towards consumers. I didn't really hear that contention in the later half of the debate. So I think it might've been better if you had extended that point um, throughout the debate. So for the con, I think it, the same problem in last round, um, you didn't really link your contentions explicitly to your framework, um, which once again is a shame because some of your contentions, like the point about democracy, seems to be quite clearly relevant to your framework, but you didn't really make those links explicit. Um, also, make sure rebuttals address the specifics of your opposition's contentions rather than what you think it might be. Um, your rebuttal to their healthcare claim, um, I know you probably you were probably like thinking about a healthcare contention about like the manufacturing of medicine or things like that, but that wasn't really how Pro ran it. Uh, Pro ran more about like individual specialized healthcare, and so you weren't really rebutting the right contention. Um, and that was also why I ultimately voted for Pro um, because I thought they won the healthcare point uh, quite clearly. Um, also, make sure to present the best form of your rebuttals in your rebuttal speech. So, for example, I thought your point about how this magnifies racism, um, it was a good point, but it only came out in the grand crossfire. In your rebuttal speech, it wasn't exactly clear. Like, I, I, I think, I think uh, Pro's defense about how racism exists anyways um, was strong, and it could have been um, preempted if you had uh, talked about this magnifying effect right in the start of your rebuttal speech. And also make sure to address all of the other size rebuttals you didn't really uh, address, like when you're defending your own point. For example, Pearl had this content, uh, had this rebuttal about how small companies actually benefit from big companies. Uh, you didn't really address that uh, when you were defending your own contention. So make sure to do that. And lastly, in your final focus, make sure to address both sides. You sort of ran out of time over there. Uh, in your final focus, you only spent like 20 seconds, I think. Uh, on the other side, I think um, you should be more balanced during time management. Thank you.
Sorry, I was trying to say thank you, but I muted myself. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all of you. Hey, good chat, everyone. Are we leaving? Relations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can leave now. Well, guys, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Judge and contestor. Bye.